I describe it as a near future thriller, um, and it's all about uh, a massive drought that hits the western United States. Um, and uh, it focuses on a water war that's been going on between two cities, Phoenix and Las Vegas, who are both fighting over a very dwindling share of the Colorado River. Water knives are sort of the 007s of water. They work for um, Nevada and uh, Las Vegas, and uh, they go out and do things like give people offers on their water rights that they can't refuse, and they blow up other people's water treatment plants. And Angel has been sent down to Phoenix on the hunt for some water rights that they think might be out there, and they aren't sure whether or not it could be a game changer for everybody. Lucy actually is probably the one I feel you know, most closely aligned with in a lot of ways. She's a journalist who's based in Phoenix and has been documenting the collapse of Phoenix as Phoenix has slowly run out of water. And, uh, and she knows things that Angel wants. And, and so a lot of the story is about their sort of bumping into each other and their interactions and trying to figure out whether they trust each other or not. Um, and then there's one other surprise character who's sort of running in the background, and her name is Maria Villarosa and she's a refugee from Texas. Texas has been devastated in this future. It's been wiped out by droughts and hurricanes and all sorts of horrible weather events have sort of just decimated it. And so most of Texas is on the move. They're all refugees, you know, fleeing to other states. And uh, Maria has ended up caught in Phoenix where state border control laws have prevented her from moving any further north or west. And, uh, and she's stuck there as sort of a second class citizen in a place that's already falling apart. The book itself, um, it was really inspired by a, 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 a trip I took down to Texas in 2011, and I was down there during the droughts that were, when the droughts were really getting going in Texas, and, and it, it was really striking to me because there was uh, a lot of disruption happening, you know, the uh, ranchers were having to put down their cattle because they couldn't support them. You know, farms weren't able to grow things, um, but also you were seeing things like there were rolling brownouts in Texas because there wasn't enough water in the dams to generate a hydroelectric head to sort of turn the turbines. And so, uh, um, and so you at the same time as everybody's running their air conditioners at you know max because they're breaking records for 100 degree days in a row, um, they also don't have enough electricity and. And so all those things were kind of going on, and the heat was just epic, um, just extraordinary. I, I personally got heat strokes, so <laughs> it, was, it was impressive to me anyway. But the thing that really stood out was that, is that it was all happening. It really struck me that that pretty much fits what the climate models say um, future normal will look like. Um, and, and so if you're standing in this drought now and saying, wow, this looks really apocalyptic, you sort of realize, wow, this means I'm not actually standing in a drought. What I'm doing right now is I'm time traveling. Um, and what does the future look like? Well, here I am in it, and wow, it looks scary. My view of technology is that technology is this amazing tool, and we make these amazing toys. And technology, I think, is a reflection of ourself um, in all of our glory and all of our horror. Um, and you can look at almost any technology and sort of see that play out. Um, you know, the one example is that you look at uh, nuclear power and you say, okay, so here, nuclear power, it can be a weapon, we can destroy cities with it, it can be power, it can generate electricity, it can be the unintended consequence of Fukushima, um, and it d demonstrates our carelessness. You know, the technology itself, you know, the, the, the science itself, there's, it's not problematic in and of itself, it's that we're using it. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's where the Pandora's box opens up. Um, it's in whose hands is the question, with how much forethought, that's the question. Um, and similarly, I think in the water knife, you know, you're seeing the power of some pretty simple technologies that have profound impacts. Irrigation, you know, dams, um, you know, electric pumps, things like this, you know, that allow us to spread water all over the land and generate prosperity, but it also gives us the illusion that that can go on forever. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, um, I think that's where, that's where we sort of get into trouble techno with technology. It gives us the illusion that we're all powerful and all knowing and, and that way lies madness. You know, I, I have, you rebooted it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this sorted out here.
See technology, the evils of technology. <laughs> this is it right here. Observe this. Like this is right. We, we thought we were so clever and now we've been crippled by a cell phone. You know, it's like so pathetic. You know? um, I think so. <laughs> um,